the microphase separation derivation for microphase separation in dye block copolymers, specifically a mix, a 50-50 mix of A and B dye blocks. So uh, we're going to develop this quantitative framework to understand when uh, and under what conditions and how does the structure change for microphase separation in dye block copolymers. So we are going to use um, basically this min-max principle that you'll hear oftentimes in thermodynamics. Um, so specifically, we're going to want to do two things, um, uh, well, ordered structures. When we transition to kind of this disordered mess of A and B blocks to this kind of ordered interface here, ordered systems, so this state, want to do two things. We want to minimize our interfacial energy. So again, creating surfaces is energetically unfavorable. So if I create surfaces, so create surfaces, I increase my delta G. So we want to minimize this interfacial energy. We want to minimize this kind of interface here, uh, where A and B blocks are, we, we had those bad interactions. And we want to be able to maximize the conformational entropy of our chains. So we always want to increase entropy. So let's kind of think, uh, think about these two systems. Um, so I'm looking with block A, block B, two different polymers, prefer not to mix. Why? Because chi A and B typically is going to be greater than zero. We know that chi A equal to chi B B which is equal to zero. So they are not going to want to mix because, again, this enthalpic term is going to push uh, for kind of phase separated. So AB context, less enthalpically preferable than A or BB. So above our order disorder, so at high temperatures, we should expect our system to look like this. So at high temperatures, the temperature above this order disorder transition, our order disorder transition, where, again, high temperatures, is where our entropy dominates, so we're going to want to mix our A and B block. But um, because we want to maximize, in this state, we maximize our conformational entropy, this delta S conformation dominates. It's uh, basically this contribution lowering our delta G is going to be uh, basically larger in magnitude compared to those unfavorable AB interactions at that temperature. So again, High temperatures, we're going to want to mix to maximize that conformational entropy despite the unfavorable AB blocks. So there's still bad AB context there, but we want to maximize our, uh, again, we want that polymer to be able to wiggle around. But below this temperature, so below our order disorder transition temperature, polymers will enter this microphase separated state. So all A on this side, all B on this side, segregate uh, together. So again, we're maximizing our AA contents. Uh, a context, we're maximizing our BB context, they're closer to one another, and the only time the AB and our touch, A and B are touching is along this interface, this intermaterial dividing surface. So we are minimizing our unfavorable context here. So at low temperatures, our enthalpic contribution is larger, so we want to make this as low as possible, so we want to minimize those number of AB interactions. So uh, the one key thing that we want to kind of keep in mind always at this point is that uh, here, we're, we're dealing with uh, dye block copolymers. They're chemically joined, so there's a length scale constraint. We're going to kind of look at the length scale in just a bit. Um, and again, this, it's going to depend on the size of the A and B blocks. So there's going to be this interface. Again, large number of unfavorable interactions. So along this IMDS, this intermaterial dividing surface, there's going to be these A, B interactions. So we want to minimize that surface. So intermaterial dividing surface right here. Um, Again, connecting all the junctions where A and B are joined. Um, so they do not want to uh, do not want to mix below ODT. Uh, so we need to make this minimize. You want to minimize that IMSDS. That's going to be again that I that min max principle. So min max, minimize AB contacts. So we want to minimize AB contacts. We want to maximize delta S confirmation. Now, one thing you can kind of see here. Um, is that what's happening to kind of my chains or specifically my delta S conformation when I'm in this ordered state, when my temperature is low or when my cayenne is really, really high? Well, these chains are kind of elongated. Uh, they're being kind of pushed apart because, again, they don't want to interact. A, A does not interact. A does not interact, want to interact with B. So these chains here are slightly extended. We know from our uh, kind of discussion of solvents that if I have a good solvent, bad solvent, what happens to my conformational entropy? Well, it decreases if I'm extended or if I'm uh, basically collapsed. So we are going to see, uh, and actually, depending on, uh, in order to kind of minimize these uh, AB contexts, 
we're going to try to minimize this intermaterial dividing surface. And depending on the size or the relative length, so in the above example there, you're looking at kind of 50-50. But what if I have a polymer that's like this? So if this is A and this is B. If I, I could change the relative fractions of my A and B components. And when you do that, you're going to see, uh, depending on, again, the chemical, depending on this chi AB, the magnitude of that uh, interaction, we're going to see different micro uh, phase separation behavior. So you can see spheres, cylinders, double gyroids, and these kind of really interesting phase diagrams that we'll go uh, into um, in a bit. So that's what we have to look forward to in this derivation. Uh, and next time, we're going to uh, basically set up how are we going to uh, develop this quantitative framework just for this 50-50 lamellar phase uh, microphase separation. So this condition right here. So I'll see you all next time. We'll start on that. Thanks. Have a good one.